everyone. How are you doing today? How are my medical enthusiasts? Good, I hope. Today I am going to show you how to make uh, bacon chicken ranch wraps. And you know how I always tell you to check your stove, make sure you know your stove before you put anything on it? Well, it's still too warm. I was baking, cooking the chicken and the bacon earlier. So if I put my cutting board on, even now, the bottom is going to melt. So we moved everything over to my uh, 18 inches of counter space. Bear with me. I promise it will work out fine-ish. It's just going to be a little squished, which uh, is on par for my day. You ever run around crazy like a chicken with its head cut off, running here, there, and everywhere, having to do laundry, dishes, 10,000 other projects, and still cook? Well, in hectic days, I don't have time for big, fancy meals. I have time to pop the bacon in the oven along with some chicken strips and put salt to basically. And Preb managed to hit all five major food groups on the food pyramid, the fifth being, of course, dessert. Hoping. Doing my best, just as I'm sure every single one of you are. After all, we all have those hectic days. So, to explain how to cook bacon, first, for those that are unfamiliar with the process, because, well, I tend to be crazy some days, but this is a trick I learned from my mother. You don't cook bacon on the stove, you cook it in the oven. So, tin foil, lay out the bacon, and cook at 400. So, here's a joke for you guys. How do you keep your bacon from curling? You don't let them take the brooms to bed. See, when you cook on the stove top, they get all curly and everything. When you bake them, they're nice and flat. That's why my stove's kind of very, very, very hot. Now, like I said, it's one of those days where I didn't have a lot of time to be fancy. So, I went with breaded chicken. This is the same stuff that you get out of your freezer section. This isn't the deli processed fancy butcher's wrap chicken. This is chicken fingers. Get a bowl. You're going to be tossing things in it. Now, yes, yes, I know. You're supposed to put the bacon in nice little groupings, cut it up, make it look pretty. This is not going to be a night for pretty. So, the fastest way to deal with bacon, yes, put it in a pile, line it up, just like this. Skip the knife. Tear. Just like that. Don't do a single piece at a time. Do the whole thing. So, I'll show you later before we close the video. But I made the Dr. Pepper freezer jam. Looks as awesome. Tastes good. Now, sometimes you're going to have to modify a recipe on the run. This is why you end up with chicken fingers tonight. Modification. This little darling is our keg style steak knife from Cutco. I haven't brought it out to show you guys yet. It's the first time I have. So let me wash the grease off my hands first. Two seconds. And let me show you what you can do. Now, this knife, steak knife, replaced our table knife as the go-to steak knife about four years ago. 
Our customers had asked for a bigger, wider blade instead of a small, tiny, thin one. And so we responded. We designed the steak knife. Now you're all familiar with the table knife. It's small, it's light, it doesn't allow for the earthquake effect because of its design. And it's great for kids. So is the steak knife. You're going to see the curved tip right here. This is what makes these knives safe for kids. They're not got a sharp point. Knives with sharp points are not good tools for kids to learn how to cut food. You want them light, you want them durable, and you want something that kids are not going to be scared to use. That's why most people, the first knives are table knives, especially when they grow up in households with it. So I don't remember if I said where the recipe came from, but it is searchingforimperfections.com. And I'm leaving the bread coating on. Give it a bit more of flavor and some crunch. There. Now, tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes that come from my mom's cherry tomato plants. Homegrown. Been doing awesome with them. Because they're small, I'm just cutting them into quarters. Normally, you'd be seeding a beefsteak tomato instead. Yeah. So, delicious tomatoes. Awesome flavor. Thick flesh. See how thick that is on a tomato, on a cherry tomato? These are little flavor bombs going off in your mouth. And, I might add, the flesh, the pulp, stays where it belongs. It's not oozing out. It's not making a wet mess everywhere. This is what tomatoes are supposed to be. Now, the reason I toss the bacon and the chicken strips all in one container along with the tomatoes is because I'm going to drizzle a bit of lemon juice over them. You can also use lime, not a big deal. But before I forget, okay, the reason the baking sheets are lined with aluminum foil and you can use parchment paper is to make clean up a snack. All I have to do is hold this together, roll it up, and toss in the garbage. Three pointer. That's what you want to be doing. You do not want to be spending more time in the kitchen than you have to, especially on those really busy days when you've got pets and kids and dogs and visitors and summer plans and projects and you got to spend time with family. No, 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 no. This is not the time to be fancy. This is the time to get good, delicious meals ready where everyone wants to say more, please. Now, at this point, you have a choice. You can cut up an avocado, add it to your bowl, ready for your mix-up, or you can get avocado dip, guacamole dip. <laughs> We're using guacamole dip today. So, just a couple splashes of lemon juice. Trying not to splash your stove. And we take our first lettuce leaf. Today it's butter lettuce. Sometimes I use leaf lettuce. I've been known to use a lot of different lettuces. You don't want a lot of guacamole, just a little bit. And you're going down the center with it. Just the center. Not the sides. Just a bit. Grab some bacon. Couple pieces of chicken. And a tomato or two. 
Take your ranch dressing. Or in this case, cucumber. Drizzle it on. There you go. And fold. Two fold. Top. And then each side. Just like that. Then the next one. Bit of bacon, a couple pieces of chicken, and some tomato. And, and then sides. Now, the trick is not to overfill these because otherwise they leak out everywhere. You don't want to do that. I've been known to overstuff my tacos. So, simple, quick, about 35 minutes to have supper from started when you put the chicken fingers and the bacon strips into the oven and to have it on the table. Now, if you want to have questions, you want to contact me, you can always do it through the private pages at Sarah Rose Quintet and Born on Facebook. It's Sarah Rose Quintet and Born or Sarah Quintet and Born Cuckoo Independent Rep. Or, and this is the one I suggest you actually use for to watch the videos, Chop Chop the Kindly Canadian. You can also find us on YouTube at Chop Chop the Kindly Canadian. This is where this video will be loaded up uh, tomorrow morning. And... You can always find me on Pinterest at Vaughn underscore Tettenborn C. So at sign V O N underscore T E T T E N B O R N C. Or Instagram, again, Sarah Rose from Tettenborn. Yes, yes, I know. The V's sound like F's. I'm sorry. Talk to the German people about 10,000 years ago. You can also text me anytime. Uh, phone number is 403-392-1788. If you have questions for Lars, I will pass them on to him. Other than that, have a great night. Enjoy. And I'll see you next week at Chop Chop, the Kindly Canadian. Have a good evening. Bye.